I am so behind, it's not even funny. I've been trying to get my spring booth reset done for the past few weeks, but everything has been so hectic at work that I just haven't had the extra time to get it done. So while I have a few hours before I have to go to work this evening, we're going to be tackling this pricing a pile. <laughs> and this is only about a quarter of it. I have so much that I need to get done and I'm hoping that I can get it all priced like right now and this evening so that we can take it into the antique booth tomorrow because I have to work tomorrow morning so that means tomorrow evening I'm going to be trying to get my whole booth reset done and everything that I can have prepped today to get it done tomorrow is really going to save me. My goal with the booth is always to have between 200 and 300 smaller items in the booth at a time. And currently, I have very little <laughs> in the booth. This is about 50 items right here. And then I have another batch that is in my inventory room and another batch that is down in the basement where I store some of my inventory. So I really need to gather all of that together, gather all of my supplies so that we can start busting out this pricing. I'm trying to focus on better representing my personal style in my antique booth, which happens to be a modern take on a vintage cottage. Makes sense, right? <laughs> I get excited by a variety of styles, which makes it hard to remain consistent in my antique booth. So now I'll be asking myself, do I want to decorate with this in my own home before I purchase something? You can definitely see a lot of the items that I have are kind of springy. I wanted to go for a very kind of cottage garden feel, so I have a lot of green glass and cute floral pieces that I will be adding into the booth on top of some of the furniture pieces. For pricing our items, we try and be as sustainable as possible. So we actually use reused items and reused materials that we find at thrift stores. So we had this box of business cards that has incorrect information on them. And instead of throwing all of these business cards away, they have really cool artwork on them. So we just decide to paint the other sides of them. And if it's a big item, we'll just punch a hole in one side. And if it's a smaller item, we will actually cut them up into three different tags and then punch a hole in it. And they are ready to write any of the information on. We also attach them to our products with string and yarn that we actually pick up at thrift stores. So anytime I see white yarn or twine at thrift stores, I always pick it up so that I can use it in my antique booth pricing. A fun fact about me is my degree is in wildlife biology and I worked in that field for seven years before I decided to tackle this adventure, which is why sustainability is a cornerstone in my business practices. Why use up our limited resources to buy something new when beautiful, unique, and well-made items already exist in the world? I focus on reclaiming, repairing, and restoring those items and try and show the possibilities when displaying history-filled pieces in your own home. Any shipping we do from our online store utilizes bubble wrap taken from our local hospital boxes from local businesses, and biodegradable tapes and wrapping so that nothing is going to waste. Of course, no system will ever be perfect, but I really try and do anything I can, and these practices save my buyers money in the long run. Other than sourcing, cleaning and pricing probably takes the longest amount of time, and it doesn't help that I dislike doing it, so I avoid it as much as possible. I could save time by buying pre-made tags, but I would rather use the salvage items so that they don't get thrown away. Phone is dying and it's time to go to work, so <laughs> I guess I'll finish this tonight. I'll see you then. Well, I am back from work. It is about nine o'clock at night and I still have a bit of pricing to do and there's still more in our other room. So we're gonna go after this for a couple hours until we need to go to bed because I open at work in the morning.
Well, it is 11 o'clock at night. I got two boxes of items priced and I have more to go, but that's going to have to wait until tomorrow morning. So I will see you then. Hello friends, it is now Saturday and I have some things to take over to the antique booth because we're doing a live Facebook sale in the next couple days. So I'm dropping off the item that I'm doing in the live Facebook sale. And then I'm going to kind of take an overview of how the booth looks right now because I know that it's extremely empty and it needs a lot of work. But we were able to get most everything priced and my plan is to hopefully finish all of that up this evening and maybe bring some stuff by the booth today but i think it's actually going to be monday by the time i can bring stuff by the booth because um, the antique booth is closed on sundays so i think what i'm going to do is take that time this is the first couple days i've had off in a row to be able to work on anything like this. So I think we're gonna take those couple of days, make everything look really nice and get it all ready, and then hopefully get it into the booth Monday morning, first thing. Because I really need, really need to stock the booth. All right, got all my stuff, and heading into the shop. This is how the booth is looking right now. Definitely empty. I have lots of spots that need filled, but I'm gonna take a second and take out all of the items that are not staying for our next reset. Usually when I take items out of the booth, I try and list them on my website at gildedgoodsvintage.com. So if you aren't local but love antiques and want to support my goal of paying off my student loans with my business, you can check out the link in the description box and see what goodies we have available. Okay, it's definitely not great, but I have to go grab some other stuff to make any of this work. So I'm going to run to the house really quick and grab some of my like structure larger pieces so I can do the big layout and then Monday we'll try and load in all the small items. I was trying to be fast so I didn't really film any of me loading stuff up but I cleaned down some of the stuff that I had stored and we're gonna go ahead and take it over to the antique booth. These are gonna be kind of my big structure pieces and there were a few things that weren't quite, quite priced or ready. So I'm going to just do this stuff right now, kind of rearrange in the booth a little bit and see if I can get it um, ready to get set up on Monday. I really love these shelves I made, but I wanna get more items into the booth so that I have more selling power. With selling in an antique booth, the more items you can fit, the better your sales will be, but it can be a fine line balance between shopability and enough inventory. Like I mentioned earlier, I try and stick between 200 and 300 items in the booth at any given time, but it can be more or less depending on what I can source. So vertical storage like this collapsible shelf, which you can see how we made in this YouTube short, and stacking items on top of others gives your display depth, interest, and more space for items. I'm focusing on setting up the bones of my display for this reason. You can imagine how difficult it could be to create structure in a setup with a lot of smalls sitting on every surface. I feel happy with the way it's looking so far and I feel like I have a good base for loading in the decor items now. All right, I'm back home now. I got myself some coffee to give me a little bit of motivation to get all this done. And I think what I'm going to sit down and do tonight is kind of look over the photos that I took of the antique booth to see where it's at with some of the items that we added in today. And I'm really going to plan the rest of the items that I'm going to be getting ready tonight and tomorrow so that on Monday, first thing when they open, I can load all of the smalls and all of the pretty decor pieces into the booth. 
I don't know that there will be much more moving around of items. Um, especially the large items, but I there are a few things that I'm going to want to change or maybe some other things that might come out. So I will see you then. I am behind, per usual. This always happens. Things get in the way, life gets in the way, and I focus on something else like my garden that I've been trying to get out and I get behind in the booth and then when I focus on the booth, I get behind in the garden and in YouTube. So we're just playing catch up right now, but I think I'm on track to finally getting back on track with everything, hopefully. Slow and steady wins the race. So in typical Amanda fashion, um, we're going to be doing a lot of work today. It has been a few weeks since I last took footage of the booth where I took smalls and placed it in because I didn't actually have that many items priced. So I took over <laughs> what I had available and I did a little bit of shopping and I spent the better part of yesterday pricing items all day. Uh, it took me a couple hours, but I have around 75 items that are ready to go to the booth. So even though this has been a very drawn out spring reset, um, we are going to go ahead and finish it up. Now I did not film bringing in the first load of smalls. I was in a rush to get everything in, so I did not film me putting everything out and rearranging it. I only filmed what it looked like at the end. So here's a little overview of everything we put up after we moved the furniture pieces around, we put smalls in. It ended up looking a lot better and I liked the display that I started putting on the door table conversion makeover that I made. Um, but now it's all messed up because items have sold. So I might need to rethink how I'm putting some items in the booth. I am going to move some furniture pieces around, replace furniture pieces, and we'll see how it goes. We do have our spring market coming up for Grit and Grace, which has a whole bunch of vendors that come in from all over and set up outside. So I do need to make sure that my booth is going to be fully stocked for that, as well as just fully stocked in general, because it does not look that way right now. I did have a few items that sold along with that small black um, half moon table that we redid together in this video. And so I'm bringing a couple of larger items to replace those and then a whole bunch of medium and small sized items that will hopefully make the booth feel very, very full. But it is already about 10 30 ish this morning they just opened 30 minutes ago and it is a saturday so i'm gonna be loading in on like the busiest day of the week it's okay i would rather get it done than have an empty booth people might just have to shop around me but that's okay so we're gonna get to it This was probably not the best outfit to wear today.
You can see where the black half moon table I had on top of the door table sold leaving a gap. I really want to use as much of that space as possible so I'm replacing it with this cute garden table. The centerpieces of this booth are going to be the set of Robert Ferber prints I found in this thrift with me video and of course I forgot my measuring tape today. I just spent way too long doing those but uh, they're not perfect and I'm not going to do it again. This table is in the way and <laughs> I didn't bring measuring tape so I just eyeballed it and I'm not fixing it anymore. We're just going to leave it. Setting up the smalls is the fiddliest part of booth design, but it's also my favorite. I get to focus on highlighting my finds and showing people how they can use them in their own homes. You might not think to use these 70 juice glasses in a bar setup, but they make for the perfect whiskey glasses. Also, I'm not gonna lie to you, I figured out my setup off camera before filming it. Y'all do not want to watch me moving the same item five times before finding the perfect place for it. Well, we ended up finishing the booth and I am so happy with how it turned out. It took a few hours of rearranging and decorating, but now it is all done. So glad to have gotten this out of the way. This means I am caught up for the antique booth and now I just need to get caught up for YouTube and this video. Got lots of great content coming up including decorating an Airbnb, some decorating for my own home, thrift flips, furniture flips, and much much more. If you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy antiques, thrifting, decor on a budget, and furniture flips this is definitely the place for you so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye!